Wanderers, welcome back to Jog My Memory. Today's video is looking at settlement geography for grade 12, more importantly, looking at rural settlements. Before we go any further, let's look at a few definitions. Settlement geography is basically the study of where people live and the reasons why they live where they do. Rural settlements are mainly unifunctional and have only one or more primary economic activity. Urban settlements are multifunctional and have secondary and tertiary activities. Size and complexity needs to be understood when classifying settlements, especially according to their function and their pattern. Let's look at rural settlements. You have your farmstead, hamlet and village, whilst urban settlements include your town, city, metropolis, conurbation and megalopolis. Now, one of the most challenging things is to remember this hierarchy. So here's a little sentence to help you out. Farmers have veggies to conquer my cravings for mushrooms. Farmers for farmstead have for hamlet, veggies for village, two for town, conquer for city, my for metropolis, cravings for conurbation and mushrooms for megalopolis. I hope that helps. Now that we understood the function and size of rural settlements, what settlement patterns do we have? We have nucleated and dispersed. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. This is a common exam question. Advantages of a nucleated rural settlement include an increase in, in, in interaction with people, an increase in safety, sharing of ideas to solve problems and sharing of tools and machinery. Your disadvantages include a decrease in privacy, arguments and conflicts between people, mainly because of sharing of profits, and you cannot always use tools and, min and machinery whenever you want to. However, your dispersed rural settlement also has the advantages and disadvantages, but the opposite. There's an increase in privacy, you are able to make more decisions on your own, you own all your profits and you have more accessible tools and machinery. Your disadvantage includes a decrease in interaction with people, less safety, you pay for all costs by yourself and it's difficult to share ideas when you have a problem. Now remembering these can be quite confusing, so here's a tip for you. Remember, an advantage for nucleated will be a disadvantage for dispersed and a disadvantage for nucleated will be an advantage for dispersed. So if you learn one, you will automatically remember the other. There's two reasons for the location of rural settlements. One is site. Site refers to the, the exact piece of ground the settlement is found on, while situation refers to the settlement in relation to its surrounding environment. Possible exam question would be, to understand and state the factors considered for a site and situation. The site refers to the availability of water, where the land is fertile and whether animals are able to graze on it. It also looks at whether building materials are available and fuel such as wood. Situation needs to be above the flood line and away from a river. It also needs to have a north facing slope which considers warmer temperatures and it needs to be in the terminal belt for warmer nighttime temperatures. It also needs to be next to a road for accessibility. Rural urban migration is the next concept I'm looking at. As countries develop and urban areas expand, more people move from your rural areas to your cities and towns. This movement of people is called your rural urban migration. However, your push and pull factors need to be considered. Let's have a look at them. Your push factors include natural disasters, lack of facilities, lack of services, lack of employment, lack of housing, lack of recreational activities, entertainment and social interactions, as well as poverty. However, your pull factors include the less impact of natural disasters because of government being more involved. You have better and more access to education and medical facilities. There is better access to services, more jobs, 
more and better housing, more recreational facilities and a better standard of living. Your common words found in your push factors are lack of and your common words found in your pull factors is better and more. If you look closely, you'll see that they contrast each other. The government strategies put in place for keeping people in rural areas include Agenda 21. This is a broad strategy to develop rural areas and basically looks at involving more people and combining their ideas in order to improve the area. This means that basic needs must be met. It involves facilities and services, which also encourages people to stay. Agenda 21 focuses on training people to do local labor, and this allows them to develop their skills. This therefore allows the encouragement of industries to use the local raw materials and the skills that people are producing. Let's do a recap. We have learned that rural and urban settlements have dependable characteristics on size and complexity. Rural settlement patterns were looked at together with their advantages and disadvantages. We looked at site versus situation, rural urban migration together with their push and pull factors and government interventions and strategies. The reference I've used is Mind the Gap Geography Study Guide for Grade 12. Go ahead and have a look at that textbook. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Jog your memory and keep wandering with me. Don't forget you can also send inquiries on my email account. Jogmymemory at gmail.com. Thank you.